Well, hello, my name is Tom Tresser. I've been in Chicago since 1980. I came here to be an actor, and I was a Shakespearean actor for a number of years. And then I helped start a theater company, and I la was launched on a, on, a, on a journey, really, from that day to this, which is really about what is the role of nonprofits. You know, my, my, my specific area was the arts, so I was asking what is the role of the arts in America and our community, but, but the larger question is what is the role of the nonprofit in the life of the country, in the life of your community? So um, let's get right to the heart of the matter. Um, how many people here lead or run nonprofit organizations? How many people here lead or run? A few, a few. Um, how many of you have experienced serious budget problems? Yeah, you can just groan if you've, yeah. Um, how many of you had had cuts of 10% or greater? 10%, 20%, 30 percent. Uh, I hear you. How many have laid off staff? Right? Okay. How many have cut back services? Yeah. Um, how many have had their constituents harmed because of these cutbacks? How many organizations here? have actually seen loss of life because of these cutbacks. Okay? All right, here's a quote from Bloomberg Businessweek, just from a month ago. Illinois ranks first nationwide when it comes to nonprofit groups reporting late payments from the government, according to a survey last year. More than 80% of Illinois groups say their money doesn't come on time. It's amounted more to more than 31,000 bills, totaling $425 million. The Department of Human Services, for instance, had 106 million in bills that were more than a month old. And they ranged from grants to nonprofit groups, from food to burial expenses. My friends, I'm here to say, and I'm sad to say, that the nonprofit sector has failed Illinois and has failed America. Now, I can give you depressing statistics from a shelf full of reports and alerts about the state of our health, of our education, of our wealth, or rather, I should say, our lack of wealth. Um, our loss of home ownership, and how many more stories there are about the 1% of America that are enjoying success and excess not seen since the Gilded Age of the 1880s. But the Uber statistic that for me is most telling comes from the Economic Mobility Project from the Pew Charitable Trusts. Now they look at economic mobility across generations, which is called absolute mobility, as well across contemporary society, which is relative mobility. Their most disturbing find is this, and I quote, the United States has less relative mobility than many other developed countries. So right now, the chances of upward mobility in the United States is statistically equal to that of the United Kingdom. Remember the place with all the lords and the serfs and all that, that stuff, the heraldry and the castles? Didn't you always think that it was better to, to be in America than, than the UK in terms of getting ahead in life? Denmark has the highest index of this sort of mobility, being three times more mobile than us. The bottom line is, you're born poor in the USA, and you're very likely to die poor in the USA. But even more sad is our measure of absolute mobility. That's to say, one generation to the next. It's eroding, a quote again from this report. Men in their 30s today l earn less than men in their father's generation, and family income growth has slowed. The, the Pew guys looked at the data, and they concluded with this. This suggests the up escalator that has historically ensured that each generation would do better than the last is not working very well. You think? OK, 99 percenters, <laughs> what shall we do about it? I can tell you one thing. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So today, I'm here to propose a very different course of action for our nonprofit sector in Illinois and across America. I propose that we join forces, we collaborate, we conspire, I think is even a better word, to form a new alliance of nonprofit leaders, workers, constituents, and allies for power and to elect candidates to public office who will pursue what we might call a human agenda, one that reflects the compassion, creativity, generosity, grassroots orientation, and people-focused values of our sector. Um, 
I guess you could say that as opposed to the corporate agenda where they get all of our stuff. A new organization has just been launched for this purpose and it's called Sea Forward. It was founded by Robert Egger, a nationally known leader of our sector, and he's the executive director of DC Central Kitchens. Now, Bob is probably the chief provider of free food in the DC area, and his organization is also branched out as a social entrepreneur. They do a lot of training, and they do a lot of for-profit contracting, but as good as he is, he figured out you can't uh, give away enough food, right? There's just not enough food to give away, and you cannot charity your way out of poverty. So that's why he's formed this organization, and it's about political engagement. Now, frankly, my colleagues and friends, and I don't understand our reluctance to enter this arena effectively. Let's look at the National Rifle Association. It's a nonprofit, by the way, that was founded in 1871 and which now has grown to a group that is very effective in policy and lobbying. And I want to know to tell me that you all are going to be less passionate about your missions and constituents than an NRA member is about her gun. I don't think that's so. Uh, let's look at the political infrastructure that sprung up around evangelical churches, starting with the moral majority and continuing with the Christian coalition the Leadership Foundation, and focus on the family. And then morphing onto the Tea Party fueled attacks on government and public services. What these groups have in common is that they have a, a shared set of values. You may agree with them, you may disagree with them. And they have established a civic architecture around those values in such a way as to translate those values into public policy. Basically, they've hired elective officials to do their bidding. Now, it's all very effective, and I would say it's driving the discussion of policy and programming in America and civic life, and it's actually backgrounded everything that you've heard here this afternoon, has backgrounded the, the, the remarks of our panelists. I say we need to get political and stay political. I say we need to put our hands on the policy, budget, and priority steering wheel and steer it away from the path we're on as a nation, which is heading right to a cliff. So we were asked, what if? The, the theme for today from Kate is what if. Well, I ask you, what if we create an instrument of power as powerful as the NRA to serve your interests, to serve your needs, to serve the needs of the people that your organizations serve and serve so effectively, but with great difficulty as has been testified. All right, so I'd like to get some help with passing out flyers. Students, can you help me out here? My wife has some flyers here. Can you, can you help us out here? Let's get organized. I'd like to have everyone in the, in the room have a, a green flyer, and there's a few yellow ones. Uh, this flyer it describes the work of C Forward, but basically it's a nonpartisan 501C4, C Forward, hence the, hence the name. Thanks, guys. It champions the economic role of the nonprofit sector and supports candidates who include the sector in their plans to strengthen the economy. Uh, the information is, is, is on the flyer, and you can go to a website to learn about it. And being technically uh, uh, cool, you can scan this Q code. How about that? So those of, you, those of you with smartphones, you can just come up here or scan it from your seat. That'll take you right to the website where you can sign up, find out more information. But we've also got a clipboard that, we're per that we can circulate, um, and maybe someone can get that out in, in the crowd. This clipboard right here, uh, is for a, an Illinois version of C Forward. So can someone grab the clipboard, please? Thank you. This is my wife, Merle. Thank you, Merle. <laughs> so um, I'm doing a little organizing right here, OK? So I hope you don't, hope you don't mind. Uh, you don't have to sign up, obviously. So, so what do you say, you know? <laughs> you know I don't want to be the, uh, the resilient sector anymore. I use, I use that guy's book in my class that I teach right now, an online class in nonprofit management. I would like to be the fighting sector. I would like to be the feisty sector. You know, I like to be the sector that wins for the people. That's the sector I want to be part of. So what do you think? Do you want to continue to sit on the sidelines of power and deal with the decisions of the powerful and continue to experience what I call death by a thousand cuts? Who knows what I'm talking about? Death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, the hell with that. Do you want to continue to stand by and, and, and as, you, as you and your staff burn out and your constituents suffer? Or do you want to do what businesses have always been doing? What the National Rifle Association has done effectively for over 140 years 
and what conservative church leaders have been, do been doing for over 30 years, and that is to get in the game of politics, to fight for what you believe in, and change America for the better. What do you say? Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you.